Hello. How is everybody today on this rainy, drizzly, gray uh, Maryland day? <laughs> Do I have video? Well, yeah, I was say it's it's very sunny here. <laughs> <laughs> Take the opportunity to uh, welcome Darrell Sackett from the San Diego uh, Spay and Neuter Project with, with us today. Um, so Darrell, hello, how are you? Hi, Karen and everyone. Thank you yeah. for inviting me to talk. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to share our information. Yes. So um, how did you get started in with the SNAP project? Um, so I um, am in uh, North County, San Diego. And when I moved here, um, I moved from the East Coast where I was a teacher in the Boston School District. And my teaching credentials were not um, accepted in the state of California. So um, I also, while I was in Boston, I volunteered at the uh, Angel Memorial uh, Humane Society, which is the biggest humane society in the country. And when I moved here, um, I decided to use my passion for animals and my teaching credentials. And I joined uh, the Rancho Coastal Humane Society, a private, and I started um, their first kids community service program and humane education program, where I brought animals into schools. In North mm -hmm. County, San Diego, um, it's pretty affluent and uh, most people understand pet responsibility and spay and neuter. So I would actually bring um, animals and the kids to um, more urban inner city, lower um, income areas and share information about pet responsibility. And that's where I met two incredible women. Um, and that's when SNAP was formed. Um, spay, they were volunteers at the uh, uh, municipal animal shelters where I was at a private mm -hmm. and municipal um, uh, we joined them walking dogs where 40 to 50 dogs were easily euthanized daily and it's very different nowadays but back then it was not uncommon yeah. to see a pile of dead dogs in the back hallways so um, how do we stop the animals from coming into the shelter you know some were getting adopted not many so that was one plan but let's stop getting them from coming in. And so with um, finding where the intake was from, it was uh, lower income areas. And we set out to teach the importance of spay and neuter. And we also started teaching veterinarians about the importance of affordable spay and neuter. So anyway, that's where mm -hmm. SNAP was formed. And that's where I joined. And here we are 23 years later. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. What impact do you think uh, SNAP has made to your community? So a combination of affordable spay neuter, uh, along with microchipping um, and social media, definitely, and mm -hmm. um, uh, more education about uh, adoption and um, purposeful breeding. Um, we have definitely seen a huge decrease in euthanasia. Um, unfortunately, there is a lot of PR about kill and and it's it there is definitely um a lot of hazy information um animals are still being euthanized animals are still being discarded that are perfectly healthy and friendly um so it's it's not it's not perfect um but uh it, definitely we are still working towards getting to that where no healthy adoptable animal has to suffer right that's very important. It, it it is a sad situation. I Monday through Friday work in the vet field, <laughs> so I'm on the mm -hmm. other side of it. Where um, what? Uh, yeah. So well, yeah, ahead. I was gonna say affordable affordable vet care. Um, mm -hmm. aside from affordable spay neuter, is definitely a very important topic, um, around the country in the vet field, yes. and that definitely makes it difficult for some people who want to be responsible, to be responsible. And that's where SNAP, um, we fill one little void um, of, of people who want to do the right thing and be able to spay and neuter their pet. We make it so they can, um, because the other choice would be to not. And right. and, and unintentional uh, litters are formed. And we're gonna talk about that in my um, <laughs> presentation. Great. Um so you have the upcoming event this Sunday on the 25th. What are some of the protocols people need to uh, either register or or do to? So, yeah, we've been um, 
promoting the free spay neuter event on Sunday and free vaccinations and free microchipping. Um, it's going to be at the American Legion in Fallbrook, which is the back entrance to the Marine Camp Pendleton base here in North County, San Diego. Um, there is registration uh, for both spay neuter and if your pet's already fixed or um, thinking about getting your pet fixed in the future, um, there is registration for free, free vaccinations and free microchipping. Um, mm -hmm. We will be on site to answer any questions. There'll be other um, people there to answer questions about pet health care. Um, it is uh, by registration. We can take some walk-ups for uh, vaccines anytime between 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. But right. spay and neuter, uh, it, is, it is full. So we'll be it, fixing, I believe, I think 32 animals will be fixing that day. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and, and the parameters for... for for the animals, do they need to be a certain age or weight? Yeah, so SNAP, um, we, and I'll talk about, we are a mobile spay neuter unit and the animals that we fix, you know, we are focused on fixing the healthy breeding age animals because we want to reduce that, um, you know, unintentional litters from being born. So um, healthy breeding age would be uh, two months through seven years, um, seven and a half years. So under eight years is mm -hmm. our are cut off. And unfortunately, we do have an 80 pound, 85 pound uh, limit. Um, and that's because of our surgical table, and also our recovery kennel space. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have that weight limit. <laughs> we have that weight limit too. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> those big guys are lot. just hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but we are building a stationary clinic in East County right now. And so um, that will accommodate any of the larger breeds over um, 80 pounds. Yeah. Do you anticipate being able to take um, more patients on a weekly or daily basis versus? Uh, not right away. Even though we are building the stationary unit, um, there's still a lot of uh, funding that needs to take place in order to hire more medical staff. Uh, the right. medical team we have right now, um, fills our two mobile units to capacity. Um, adding that stationary unit means we're going to be adding another full-time medical team. Um, mm -hmm. So we are, uh, you know, we have funding in place to continue, um, uh, but not uh, as, as on a full-time uh, basis with this that is... location. So that'll oh. be a third location. So was that a uh, stationary unit donated or did you guys raise funds for it? It's donated. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it was donated um, by uh, uh, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Hempel um, in East County, San Diego. Um, mm -hmm. They are both board certified veterinarians who are uh, incredibly uh, giving and uh, do a lot for the community. They are also um, servicing very high end uh, pet care owners and and they also have the foundation. And so with that, they provided, they understand the importance of helping all. So they provided the space for us to build the stationary spay neuter unit. Wow. Yeah. How did you learn about dogs on deployment and become um, associated with us? So dogs on a pool. Oh, so I uh, <laughs> attended a uh, event called uh, Woof, it was called Woof Walk then, now it's called Bark in the Park. Woof Walk was a big event at Admiral Baker and it was um, put on, I believe, by Navy Life. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. It was good 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. And my, uh, we brought the neuter scooter as a sponsor for the event. And we offered to do uh, 30 free spay and neuters that day for military members, for E1 through E4. Mm -hmm. And that day, uh, we, as a corporate sponsor, you know, we set up and, and did a great day of surgery. And we had a little booth out along the walk area where I was set up next to the dogs on deployment booth. And the man who was volunteering at the booth's name was Richard Setzer. And him yeah. and I had a um, great day uh, just talking about all thing dogs. And he and I met again, and he reached out to Elisa and they came up with a partnership that has been going strong ever since. And yeah. that is the Rich Setzer uh, Memorial Grant. So we, together with Dogs on Deployment, uh, provide free spay and neuter for dogs uh, owned by military members who are E1 through E4. And that partnership is where Dogs on Deployment pays for the, the low-cost client fee. 
And then SNAP continues to pay for their um, portion, which uh, is our donor funded, all the medical supplies and all the um, uh, drugs and medication and all that. Right. And mm -hmm. the uh, client fee uh, covers the payroll, the wages for the day. And that's kind of how our clinics function. And then um, that way the military member does not have to pay a dime out of pocket and their pet will go home spayed and neutered with vaccines, nail trim, microchip, license, e-collar, everything that they need. <laughs> everything. Wow, that's awesome. So I understand you have some information you wanted to share with us. Um, you want to share your screen? I sure will. I'll share on um, this. A few of the things may be a repeat, but I will, yeah. um, you know, do my best to go through them. All right. Oh, my, my. There I go. <laughs> I'm just mouse happy here. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. All right. Hello there. <laughs> SNAP, Spay Neuter Action Project. It does stand for Spay Neuter Action Project. Um, our organization is all about action. Um, mm -hmm. Our mission is saving lives by reducing pet overpopulation. And that is uh, one thing we stick to the one thing. And that's why we've been so successful over the last 20 years, I believe is because we focus solely on spay neuter. Um, these are our mobile units. On the bottom is the newest unit. That's our 2019 uh, Freightliner neuter scooter. This is the one that will be at the event on Sunday at the American Legion in Fallbrook. Um, our original neuter scooter on the top left is a Thomas truck. And like wow. I said, we're currently building a stationary unit in El Cajon. So those are the neuter scooters. And if you look inside uh, the neuter scooters, how we can do so many surgeries is it is designed to be very, very efficient. Again, for one type of surgery, you know, we're not here to do uh, teeth, um, uh, <laughs> eye ulcerations, you know, this is spay and neuter. So we have all our recovery kennels on the left-hand side. We have small kennels along the top, as you see here for cats, this is for medium-sized dogs or maybe a litter of cats and kittens. And the bottom are our big dogs. We are limited to six large dogs per clinic. And unfortunately, out in the rural areas, that's probably our highest number. But um, th this is our limit. And then we have medium and cats. So we will fix anywhere um, 30. Uh, we have 27 kennels. We try to uh, schedule like two cats together or two small dogs together. So we usually average about 30 surgeries per day. On the right-hand side is where we wash, sterilize um, all the surgery packs um, for each animal. We have um, 27 uh, surgery packs. So they get washed and dried after each surgery and prepared for either the rest of the day or for the next day. Um, the anesthetic prep area is here with the wet table and our exam room is in the back. Here, the doors are open. We have two pocket doors here and the vet is getting ready to start surgery for the day. Wow, very efficient. <laughs> we have lots of programs um, that help variety of communities throughout the county. But today we're focusing on the MillSnap program. And like I said earlier, the MillSnap program was uh, devised by a partnership between Ritz Setzer of Dogs on Deployment and SNAP. Um, Pet owners will apply for a pet chit through Dogs on Deployment. And if approved, um, they will get all the information they need to schedule their pet on the neuter scooter free of charge. And there's Rich. <laughs> this is what, here's Rich. Yep, yeah. at a Dogs on Deployment event. And here is what the site looks like for the Memorial Grant to apply for the pet chit. <laughs> The reason why we came up with this program is because it is smarter, safer um, for an animal being boarded to be spayed or neutered. Um, so dogs on deployment does require all pets um, under one year, uh, over one years old to be spayed or neutered. So mm -hmm. we are there to help the pet owner who may be future deployment in place to prepare for boarding and getting their pets spayed or neutered ahead of time. Other than just having the availability to be boarded, it is really uh, beneficial for you to have your pet fixed. Um, 
a uh, spayed or neutered animal is going to have uh, just a much calmer demeanor. Um, there'll be less behavioral problems, less biting, less fighting, less marking. Um, of course, with a female, um, there's less chance of having that accidental litter and having to go through all the mess of having puppies, which is literally a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and also the concern of getting them into homes where they will be um, provided for for the rest of their lives. Uh, statistics show that um, only one out of every seven dog uh, will find a forever home and one out of 10 cats will find a forever home. Um, there's also an um, incredible statistic where seven puppies and nine kittens are born for every person that's born. So there's just not enough homes for animals in need. So, um, and also to show your child the, you know, beauty of birth, this is not the way to do that. <laughs> Take them to the shelter and that's a way to show them the beauty of not letting them have puppies or kittens. Having your pet spayed or neutered, it's also very good for your pet. Um, there's less chance of them having testicular cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, uh, mammary tumors, all sorts of health uh, problems that come with not having your pet spayed or neutered. Every time your female pet goes into heat, their chance of pyometria increases. Um, so it's, it's another reason to get your pet spayed or neutered at a young breeding age. Um, less chance of disease, less chance of them escaping. An unneutered male dog is, uh, I believe it's like 80% of all dogs hit on the freeway are unneutered male dogs. The reason is they smell animals in heat, so they escape to go find the female. And that could also be a coyote. Um, mm -hmm. Pets that are spayed or neutered are generally more friendly and safer. Uh, safer leads us into reasons of why it's good for the community to have your pet spayed or neutered. Um, almost all dog bites are from unneutered male dogs. So 100% of all serious bites are unaltered dogs in general. It's not a pit bull, it's not a German shepherd, it's an unaltered dog. Um, so if you have children in the home, that would be the number one reason to get your pet spayed or neutered in your house, if, if not for any of the other reasons. <laughs> So um, also the cost of housing pets in animal shelters is pretty expensive. Um, so if there's less animals entering the shelters, that means there's more money freed up for other um, things like police, schools, and health services. Did you know <laughs> that <laughs> two dogs who are unaltered can potentially, with their offspring, produce up to 67,000 puppies. And it's even worse for cats. Two unaltered cats in six years can produce up to 420,000 kittens. Ugh. This is uh, just uh, one day I walked to the Chula Vista shelter. This is one shelter in San Diego County. Um, there are 14 shelters in San Diego County. Every single one of them is full to capacity and they're turning people away uh, because there's no room. And this is one of the uh, problems with, you know, zero euthanasia is that they really are trying to not euthanize, um, which is great for those animals. However, people are left with no resources if there is a problem for what shelters were built for to help the community. So animals are being left in the streets. Um, and, and this is just a, a problem throughout the county is stray animals and a lot of times they are just released because a family or pet owner in trying times has no other resources. Um, over 6 million companion animals enter our shelters. That's a US number. Here in San Diego, it's 50,000 dogs and cats in those 14 shelters each year. Hmm. And right. statistics have gone down. Um, when I first started with SNAP, it was about 10 million animals that were euthanized every year. Um, so it is down to, uh, and this is just data provided by U.S. shelters. There's a lot of information that's not provided into the data, but this is what is uh, what we have. And we use Best Friends and Maddie's Funds to uh, get our data. 
So with those statistics of um, how many offspring dogs and cats could potentially have, how many homes that are available, um, it makes no sense to allow your pet to have puppies or kittens. Um, and if someone is not sure whether they want to get their pets fixed, if none of those statistics help them decide, um, we do offer incentives um, out in the public with the low cost spay neuter, the animals um, all receive their free print anesthetic exam, their injectable pain medication, their e-collar, their nail trim. Um, they do receive a free dose of advantage if they have fleas, um, the free dose uh, deworming if they have worms. We do offer free distemper parvo combo vaccines and the feline um, combo vaccines as well. Both dogs and cats get a free rabies vaccine and dogs that receive their rabies vaccine in certain jurisdictions will also get a free one-year license. Um, we are looking for a funder, but we will be providing, uh, we do provide $10 microchips, um, but we're hoping to provide free. We will be providing free microchips at the event on Sunday, but free microchips for all is in our future as well. Very good. Thank you so much for listening to me go on about the importance of spay neuter, but I hope you do share uh, something that you've learned today with someone who may be thinking about allowing their pet to have a litter uh, just for no other reason than just because it might be fun. Right, right, right. Very important information. Um, I would like to just open up uh, if we have any questions while well, we have a few minutes left. Yeah, so I don't have any questions in the chat, Karen. Um, I know we have a few of our boarders who are on here. So if you guys have questions, um, feel free to drop it in the chat and we can answer them right now. I do want to say um, uh, just a few things. Um, one, on our last border webinar, um, boarders kind of expressed, hey, we need something as a border to hand out to friends and neighbors to get them to sign up to be a border. So um, one of their things instead of our rat cards was asked if the for the border, if they could have like a business card size something that has the information. And um, one of our longtime boarders, Alan, was nice enough to send us what we should put on those. So those are just now created. So if boarders would like to have some cards sent to them, we can definitely do that. They can get in touch with me. Um, also, if you guys have ideas as to things that you would like to see on these webinars, like topics, I just heard from somebody that they would like to see a future topic um, on the webinars about heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and first aid with going into the summer, please, please send me your ideas. Like these border webinars are for you guys, our borders. So we want to make sure that we are hitting topics that you guys want to hear about, that we can educate um, everybody on and that they're not just topics that we're, we're just picking. We want to make sure that they're ones that really are things that you guys would like to hear and learn about. Um, something like those topics going into the summertime, I think is a great thing. And I know Karen, you'll be able to definitely help us with getting those um, topics touched on the next couple ones that we have coming. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions that we do have do you partner with any do you partner with any other organization elsewhere in the country? I'm assuming this is based off of um the spay and neuter aspect, Jenny. Yes, okay. Um we yes and no. So we do not have a exact partnership like we do with SNAP anywhere else. Um However, we do work with um, some of the low cost vet offices with doing grants for spay and neuters outside of our area. We um, have a nonprofit in Texas who we have done something similar with where they have, you know, a couple veterans here and there that need spay and neuters and they do a portion and we pay a portion. Um, and then we have another one in Minnesota that we do. Um, but again, it's it's only just a couple veterans usually that we we get from those. Eventually over time, I'm sure we would love to partner with more organizations. Um, again, it's a funding aspect, but that is something that Elisa and I, you know, are looking into since we have put these quarterly um, SNAP events out for San Diego that we're doing. We have heard a lot on our social media about 
why is this not in our area? Dogs in deployment, how do you bring this to our area? Can you make this happen? So Elisa and I do have this on our radar. We are definitely working on figuring out how we can partner with other organizations in the future to be able to help more military and veterans in other areas um, with the same service that we have for SNAP here in our San Diego area. Uh, Gina says, how can you convince men to neuter their male dogs when men feel that getting their dogs neutered will make the men themselves less masculine? <laughs> well, um, it, fortunately, it's just it. It is a rule of ours with dogs in deployment. It did not used to be a rule in the past. We had some problems that had happened where um, a litter of puppies had happened in a home and the dog had jumped the fence um, and ended up, we ended up with a litter of puppies. That service member was deployed actually at the time to a war zone. And um, it just, it came into a big mess of, well, what do we do with these puppies? Who's responsible now? And the border saying, well, I don't, I didn't sign up for puppies. So um, <laughs> at that point, that's when we said, okay, all pets over a year must be spayed and neutered. If they're under a year, then we will go ahead and push them through. However, if they are going to be a year while they're in boarding with the border, we ask them to work that out with their border so then that way they can get spayed or neutered during that time. We also mm -hmm. let our service members know that if they can't financially afford to get their pet spayed and neutered to use our services, that they can apply for our Rich Setzer Memorial Grant um, for our spay and neuter fund to be able to assist them in that aspect. So besides having the requirement, we also offer the financial aspect um, if they need it, because that's what we're here for. Uh, Darrell said, SNAP partners locally only, dogs in deployment, Feral Cat Coalition, Animal Welfare Foundation, SD Humane Society, and Animal Control um, is who they work with. And that's I was answering the questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's so, great. Yes. I love it. So the, for the men, um, no, that's true. We hear that a lot also. Um, and I, so a couple things. I do try to provide the statistics about like if you're, you know, 100% of the dogs bite and if they're going to get confiscated, do you want that? Um, do you want to take that risk? Um, also, uh, the male dog is, might smell female coyotes or dogs in heat and they will escape. You know, do you want to risk that? And then... Um, uh, also a lot of dog parks will have signs up that say no unneutered dogs allowed. Um, you know, you can't take your pet to a dog park. So if none of those work, um, it's, um, you know, the good thing you have it as a requirement, the dogs are different. You know, then I kind of go into that. The dogs are different. You know, they're not looking at a, another dog and thinking, Ooh, she's pretty. Um, it's just, their, it's just nature, their, their body just puts them into that position to reproduce. So they're not thinking anything else other than that. So if they're neutered, you're not removing anything else other than that hormone, that's going to force them to consistently want to do that. It's almost worse that they're in that mode all the time. And, um, and that's why it becomes unsafe is because if you or your child gets in the way of them in that testosterone driven mode, um, that's when problems happen. Perfect. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. I just, I do want to respect everyone's time. So um, thank you, Darrell, so much for coming on. I know you're super busy and we will definitely see you this weekend. We're super excited for this event and to help our military and veteran families. Um, we have our next month, um, Jenny from who is a longtime boarder of ours and also from one of our partners Bowser Beer she's going to be on with us next month I'm super excited for that one and um, so yeah make sure you guys sign up for the next month it's already been posted on the website we will go ahead and post this um, probably sometime next week and that's all I have Karen for you um, if you want to finish Please. this off. Yeah we just need to to pick a winner because last time we got a little out of sorts and we didn't pick a a, a winner for a swag a winner i love swag it Swag winner so right, who'd you pick <laughs> today's winner is let me scroll through the faces here uh d blankenship you're the winner 
<laughs> All right. I will so, be sending you an email, D. Congratulations. So thank exciting. you. All right. <laughs> Enjoy your swag. We'll see you guys next month. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.